scripts this week, and I've read about 19 scripts. Ooh. But uh, a lot, I think that some of them threw the junk on me, you know what I mean? <laughs> like thinking, hey. Yeah, they just picked up whatever was on the desk. Yeah, let's give him a junky movie. <laughs> he could probably still sell about $70 million worth of tickets, yeah. and then we'll, uh, you know. We'll move on from there. You're hot to trot. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I, yeah, my, my hot to trot, if you will. So I've been smart about it, and I'm waiting till I find the right piece of material. And I know it's out there somewhere. And then, uh, and then we're going to do it. It's going to happen. There will be a movie. I'm convinced of this more than ever. So he's going to be out there next week taking meetings. We're going to get it together. I'm not going to do an eeny, meeny, miny, mo like Chevy Chase. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to be the right thing. It's got to be something cool. Is our agent a super agent? Yes. You identified him as super agent. <laughs> he is if he wants to be called that. I call him super agent. It makes him feel good. <laughs> super agent. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of weird. I, I got, uh, over the last three weeks, I got to see Geraldo's structuring of his management people. And he's got about 50 guys all representing him. Yeah. Like, there was one guy at one point, the agent who seems to be mostly in charge. And then there were, like, other agents... And uh, I don't, it, everything Even seemed, yesterday, I didn't know who was talking to us. Yeah, it, there was an agent there yesterday who was a totally brand new guy, one that we hadn't even talked to on the phone. But then there were like, I don't know, seven people with him. Yeah, I know. I don't, who are those people? I don't know. Well, some of them are from Now It Can Be Told, his TV show. Yeah. Some of them are from the Geraldo TV show. You know, the Geraldo right. where he does Donahue. Yeah. And uh, then there was an agent there who was not the guy we talked to all week. Yeah, he came up and in, I don't know what he said. He was introducing himself. Yeah, him. everyone was very serious. <laughs> you know, it was just like, yeah. I couldn't really operate that way. I got one guy, Don Buckwell. I, I talked to him. He talks to me, and that's it. Better be a super agent. He has to do the work of five people. <laughs> He's a super agent if he has to deal with my phone calls all day. <laughs> what is it? Our, uh, our guest is here. Oh, Crispin? Yeah, he's been here for a co you know, right since the beginning of the bar. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know. All right, I'll get him in for a few minutes. Just let me take a commercial break. Sure. He should be a lot bigger star, but he don't know what he's doing, Crispin. Well, maybe you could give him some career guidance when he You know what I'll do? Up. I'll give him some career guidance and I'll throw him out. Right on his ass. <laughs> Say, now, come back when you're big. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. 99% of the people in our audience don't even know who he is. <laughs> i got to describe his appearance in uh, Back to the Future 900 times before right. they get it through and their how head. How many years ago was that? Yeah. Back to the Future. He couldn't stay with Back to the Future. Oh, no, he couldn't do that. No, can't one. do that. You want to just get uh, Crispin in here real fast? Anybody remember Crispin Glover? <laughs> let's take a few calls, see if anybody does. Yeah, let's see if anybody knows who he is, I, I, so I can make my point to him. <laughs> that obviously he's taken a few wrong moves. Yeah. Let's see if anybody knows. Freddie just screamed out the answer, of course. Hi. Hey, Crispin, how you doing, dude? Good, thank you. All right, man, mellow out. <laughs> <laughs> man. <laughs> I always thought it was an act with you, you know what I mean? What's that? You know, being odd. Oh, um, well, yeah, well, a uh, certain amount. Uh, we put the headphones on you, and you just take them right off. Well. <laughs> well, how are you going to hear Robin? <laughs> oh, oh, I, I didn't realize. Yeah, what's the big deal with wearing headphones? I, I, I didn't, I thought it would be, I didn't realize there was some, somebody in another room. Yeah, it's good to wear headphones. Yeah. What, do headphones make you nervous? Well, I, if, if somebody wasn't in the room, then I'd, uh, if somebody wasn't in the other room, then I wouldn't need it. It would seem... Odd. Right. Well, yes. no, I won't say anything, so you really won't need them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are, uh, you know what I mean? I always thought it was an act that you were so odd, but it's not an act. Well. You know, like when you put the gynecologist table in your living room? I thought that was odd, and I just said, oh, there's a guy trying to be odd. He's and trying he, a little too hard, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I mean, you know, putting a gynecologist, that's sort of like Billy Crystal putting an airline bathroom in his house. Yeah. He recreated one of the uh, bathrooms from, like, the airlines. Oh, you know, yeah. like when you an, go an airplane, airplane bathroom, yes. Huh. You know when you go in the airplanes? You're right. And they have those stupid little bathrooms? Huh. His bathroom in his house looks like that. Wow. And I said, well, there's a guy who's really <laughs> quite normal, but he's trying to look a little peculiar to his friends, so it'll huh. seem kind of cool. Huh. But when you bought the gynecologist table, I said, well, there's a guy trying to look odd. <laughs> well, well... I, I remember when I got it, I, I went to the, the, the Salvation Army, and there was just this big stainless steel uh, uh, table. I, I actually don't really know if it ever if it was a, a gynecologist table or not. Well, it had stirrups on it. No, it didn't. No, sure no. it did. No, it, re it really did Well, didn't. he was in his house, Howard. Yeah, but I saw a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, no, it you, 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 really never had stirrups on it. Oh, it, it didn't? It was, it had, I liked it because it had gears, and it was, yeah, it was weird-looking and odd-looking. I kind of made it into this kind of art. Uh, my living room was like an art 
Uh, Your living room's a mess. You know that. Well, it's it's not like that anymore. I oh, mean, yeah. I don't I don't have the, the the that that in the living room anymore. I've got a lot of old antiques from the eighteen hundreds and stuff. Do you so, put your dates up on the table? Do you ever put some girls up there? I never did that. No. What's your story, though? You like girls, though, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Sometimes I think, like, maybe you don't like girls. No, no, I definitely like girls. You do? But is <laughs> yeah. it hard to get girls because you're so peculiar? Well, I... I, <laughs> I mean, it's got to be hard, you know? I mean, well, I mean, you've been in movies and stuff. Don't even say what movies you've been in, because I want to see... <laughs> wait, I want to prove a point. Hold it. Hold okay. that thought. We're gonna, I just want to take a few phone calls. Okay. I don't even know why you're here, to be honest with you. I don't even know why I have you. Nobody oh, knows I, who you yeah, are. I have hold a movie a coming up. Yeah, but hold on a second. Okay. Hey, do you know who Crispin Glover is? Yeah, actually, I do. Who is it? Uh, River's Edge and Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah, but you heard us saying that. Nah. Try really? again, you know, just <laughs> look at somebody who hasn't been listening. Do you know who Crispin Glover is? Yes, I do. Is that because you heard us talking about it? No, no, I shut the radio off. Oh. Who is Crispin Glover? He was the father in all the Back to the Future movies. No, no, no I was only wasn't. in the first one. Yeah, that's a real important point. And he point. was in a great movie um, <laughs> called River's Edge. All right, one second. Thank you. Uh, I'll put you on hold if you want to talk to us about You want to talk to us about something? No, I just want to tell you he was great in the movie River's Edge, which people didn't see. It was an excellent movie. That's yeah, great. That's A lot of his movies people don't see. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. He makes excellent choices. You now, know what? On. That means he's going to have a long <laughs> career. Yeah, but nobody will know either. <laughs> you know who Crispin Glover is? Yeah, I know who he is. Well, well you knew because you hear us talking about him. Yeah, no, I, I know of him. I know his voice. He's that nerd on Back to the Future. Right. All right. He's the guy who should have knocked out that kid. This is Chuck from Agora Hills, your buddy. All right. <laughs> He's as weird as you. We ought to introduce the two of you. Crispin, who chooses your movies? Chevy Chase? Well. <laughs> and Dan Aykroyd, do they get together and help you make selections? Let me tell you about this guy. Crispin was the father in Back to the Future. Nice little shot for an actor. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know there's sequels coming up. Yeah. Right. So a then, payday. So then he goes, uh, yeah, the sequel's when you make your money. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what you think. Well, wh well, I, 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 that, that's one of the re well, I, I guess it's not a good thing to do career-wise to talk about. But but yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, I, I I I we couldn't come to an agreement for for the sequels. What they well, offer? How much you? were you asking? Yeah, what were you asking for? Well, they they I I mean. I I I I I I don't know if it's good to talk sure it about is. actual. Sure, it is. Sure, it's good. This is, is the way it? you get things Does done. He stutter? What is that? <laughs> he ain't well, stuttering. He's no, on the hot no, seat. No, really. What, what, li literally, what, what happened was they 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 came in at a certain amount of money. Did they, they offer you six hundred thousand? No. Did they offer you five hundred thousand? <laughs> no. They offer you three hundred thousand? No. Are we in the wrong ballpark? Should we be going up? No, you should be going down. A hundred thousand dollars? Something like that. You're yeah. kidding. Yeah. How long was the part? It was it was a short part. No, nah, he was right then. But that's not that's part, not right. That's part. not right. He deserves six hundred thousand. <laughs> Did you want six hundred thousand? Well, I mean, uh, I, 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 I. What I would you have settled for? I, 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 it, it all depends. I don't know. I mean, it, what it, would you have settled for? I, I, I honestly negotiate with me. I'm the guy. <laughs> I'm Bob Zemeckis. Okay. <laughs> I, I. You, you know, want to say Bob Zemeckis is a rat fink? Go ahead. <laughs> is he the guy who produced that? Well, uh, well, he was one of the. He was the director. He yeah, was the director. Spielberg produced well, it, yeah. didn't he? I, I think he was one of the. Producers. I guess Spielberg doesn't have any money to pay you. <laughs> Pretty broke. I, I, I think. In in general, they're, they're, they they don't uh, they don't pay a lot of money. They don't like to uh, reward anybody who might be they, a part of the creative like, process. They, they didn't like me in particular. I have to admit. Why? Because you're a pain in the ass on the set. Let me ask <laughs> you something. What do you do? Why are you so damn peculiar? Listen to me. Okay. I'm going to give you some advice. I, you have a father? <laughs> yes. Does your father give you advice? Uh, sure. Right, I'm a, I'm now your daddy. <laughs> I'm Mr. Glover. Okay? okay. What's your father's first name? Bruce. Bruce. All right. Yeah. Call me Bruce. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. You got any hostility towards your father? <laughs> sure. Everybody. You do. Does. No. Right. No. No. I mean, I, I, my father. I don't want you to chop me up on a gynecological table. <laughs> yeah, on second thought, I'm not your father. Yeah, right, all right. Yeah, you know what? Don't think of me as your father, okay, pal? I don't know what's floating around in your no, head. No, no, no. In fact, no. I don't even know how you didn't pass Fred on, on the way to Mars. <laughs> but um, let me tell you something, okay? And this is okay. real important. Okay. Uh, there's such a thing as negotiation. Right. All right. I don't know who your agent is. Did your agent negotiate this uh, Back to the Future thing? Oh, it, it was. It really. It really was very one-sided. There was a, a, what, an offer made, and there was no no going up from the offer that was. It was hundred thousand dollars. But you got to find I, out what he I did on the first movie. What, what did you do on the first movie? To make himself so unappreciated. Oh, you know what it no. was, Robin. I'll tell you right. He don't even have to open his mouth. Yeah. I'll tell you what it was. Crispin gets on the set, and he's peculiar. <laughs> and he lets those peculiar peculiarities Pe pe pecul <laughs> pecul <laughs> excuse me, Chris, we're having some trouble, all right? Peculiar arities. He lets this odd behavior, <laughs> this strangeness yes. <clears throat> come through. All you gotta do let me tell you what it is to be an actor. You go to the set 
And listen to this. And this okay. is going to this is this is not going to seem profound to you, but okay. actually it is going to seem profound to you because you don't do this. <laughs> you go to the set and you say, "I'm here for work." They say to you, "Do you know your lines? We'd like to do a run through now." Yes, I know my lines. I would like to do a run through right now. Right. All right. Do you want to run around nude on the set? No. I don't want to do that. Do you want to uh, take your lunch and spread it all over your hair? No, I don't want to do that. Do you need more motivation for your character? I don't do you need wanna, did you lock yourself in your dressing room? Oh, no, I don't no, need no, no. any... What did you do? I, 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 nothing, really. No, you see, you don't know you're peculiar. Uh, I, 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 honestly, I think, I th I think that, that, that there's a certain amount of what, what you're saying is true, is that there are, there, there are things that... Uh, what do you do when you get to the movie set? Do you need I, some kind of motivation? I, no, no, do no. You no. How long does it take you to prepare to be... No, nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm really... I'm not. I've, that's something I've never been. I've never been di difficult. In, Did you in, decorate no. your trailer in raccoon skins? No, not at all. No. Did you cook rice on a stern? No, there, there Did you was, insist on special I, food? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you something. I did have an argument with Robert Zemeckis about Good. how the, the 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 film ended. I I didn't think that that we should have come back rich. All right. I let me tell you something. Was a, I I, sh I realized I was twenty years old. I didn't. Right, I should let me have let me say something to you. Let me tell you something about Bob Zemeckis. Okay. <laughs> I don't know Bob Zemeckis from a hole in the wall, but Bob Zemeckis is a very busy man. Very successful. Man. You know that, <laughs> yes. right? You know that. Okay. Sure, yeah. And you an weren't there when he decided to do this movie. Right. No. You weren't any part of it. He just he hired you. He gave a good of job. Course. Okay. Oh, Let me I tell know. you something. You got to think about it. Like you got to think of yourself as a construction worker. <laughs> yes. You're I agree. happy to get day work. I oh, understand. I agree. Yes. You're like these Mexican peasants who stand on the side of the road, get, waiting to get picked up by Billy Preston. So we'll take them and let them get do barn work for That's the day. Right. That's, That's right. all you are. I, I totally agree with you. You would have argued with Alfred Hitchcock, right? Oh well, yes. <laughs> now let me tell you something. You say you did nothing weird on the set. I'm telling you, you did weird stuff on the set. You don't even know you were being weird. Well, that's that's quite possible. Then, to top it all off, after being weird all day, you yep. go up to Bob Zemeckis, <laughs> all right, who, who considers you already a fly in his ass, and you bite him, and you say, uh, "Excuse me, Mr. Zemeckis, uh, I have some thoughts on the ending of this movie if I'm to be in it." And he goes, "What is it? What is it, Crispin? Crispin?" Well, well and, and Crispin says. Say it. Well, no. Actually, what happened was we we shot we shot the end in a different way. Yes. And then he came back and he 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 because we we kind of. What do you care about, about the ending of it? Just go in and make. He the money. didn't need your agreement. Well, no, 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 no. But but I mean, we we agreed, and then the thing did, he didn't Wait he didn't a second, like hold it. A second. But... You agreed. Yeah. You mean you came to... How did you get him to agree with you? Did you put some kind well, what, of pressure? What it was was did that... Did you tell him you would not be in the ending no, of the movie? No, no, no. Oh, no, of course not. No, oh. but but no, I, I, I had wanted it to, to have a, uh, a, slight, uh, a slightly uh, a more... Uh, uh, I, ha having to do more with pe people w liking each other or something and, and, and not having so much to do with, with the money element. I but, see. Uh, Let me tell you something about yourself. You're a good-looking guy. You know that? I'm looking at you now. You're a handsome man. Yeah. <laughs> you're handsome. You're a little goofy, but you're handsome. Yes. All right, when you act, that goofiness doesn't seem to come through unless you want it to. So you're a good actor. Right. 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 But you gotta, you got to say to yourself, listen, I'm a goofy guy. I'm an eccentric. You're an eccentric. Right. There's nothing wrong with being no, an eccentric. No, I agree. You right. got your shirt buttoned a strange way. I see what's going on with you. <laughs> you're an unusual guy. You're an uncomfortable guy. You're uncomfortable in life. Am I correct? Well, I... I'll uh, be honest. To, to, to a little bit. It's a, you realize when you walk into a crowded room of people, you have you're trouble. You're different. <laughs> you're different, right? You're not the same as everyone else. Am I right? Well, it, it all depends on what, what, what you're looking at. Uh, you're I mean, a strange guy. Would you admit that? Uh, well, Do I... Do you see I, yourself as unusual? I, I, have you I, found a crowd of people like you? Have you ever met anyone like you before? <laughs> well, I mean... Right, listen I, to me. I mean, have you... Have what you, you need to do is recognize that I'm right. Well, when yeah. you go on the set and you see, you're reading the script, you see, hey, I could probably go up and tell Bob Zemeckis the right way to do this ending, but you know what? Who cares? Yeah, I'm going to go in and make a lot of money. Yeah, oh, I, 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 to I totally agree with that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely. Uh, Listen I'm, to me. There, let I, me ask. There you are something. three steps. What? They hand you a stack of papers called a script. You read the papers, and they give you the money. Oh, I agree. That's it. I totally agree. And let you don't let ask. any of your personalities stick through. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Only I mean, in your acting. Well, yeah, I agree. I, I, I definitely agree. Has he had uh, as much say in his other films? Oh, yes. You know why? He, he ends up writing them with the guys. <laughs> what was that film you made with your friend? Oh, oh, you mean Reuben and Ed. Reuben and Ed. That's the one that's coming out right yeah, now. Yeah, Reuben and Ed. He had a oh, lot of oh, say. Oh, he wrote it. I didn't write that. Well, no, I he, didn't write he could it. tell his friend what to do. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. That's See, not now true. you're going in films where you'll have some kind of creative control. No, that's not You don't want that. That's not, I you want no control. That's like me in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm about to make a movie. I'm uh -huh. going to be making a movie. A major film. Right. I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about using you in the film. And you know what? Then I say to myself, wait a second. 
Crispin Glover, you're going to be so telling me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't need a headache. I got enough problems all day. I want everything to go easy. That's it. I I, know. I agree. Do I have your words? You'll behave yourself on the set? Yeah. All right. Uh Uh-oh. He can't say that. And I tell you one thing, I'm not paying you a dime. You've got to prove yourself first, and maybe the sequel will talk a good deal, all right? I'm no dope. Now, let me tell you something. This Reuben and Ed. Yes. What, did you get together with your buddy? Well, a friend of mine wrote. Who was that guy? Uh, he he had done a. Uh, I had done another film with him at uh, AFI. I never heard of him. What's Who's that? He? Oh, oh, his name's Trent Harris. And who is AFI? Uh, American Film Institute. Never heard of that. Well, but what was the movie? Oh, oh, it was a, it was a short film I did uh, when I was nineteen called The Orkley Kid, hmm. where, I, uh, where I played this guy who dressed up as Olivia Newton-John when he's by himself and wants to get into show right, business. Listen to me, you know, you know, you know something. I'm going to tell you something right now. There's a mainstream topic. You know, a film like that is never going to make money. Oh no, but it's still it's my favorite film I ever did. Doesn't I mean, matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That's you're making films for yourself. We got to make <laughs> films for the public. You understand? When I go into a film deal, I am right. waiting for the right script. You know why? Not because yeah. I want a great script, so I'll be a great guy. So it'll make boatloads of cash. I, you're right. I mean, I totally, it's a business. It's it, show business. Yeah, I, I know. I wish I, 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 I agree. I wish I did th- was able to get my mind to do that, yes. to think that way. You're I, a good actor, damn it. Yeah. I just got to get you straight. <laughs> I got to make you understand you're a little I, peculiar. I, I know. I agree. I, right. I, I agree well, gonna, that thinking about right, money now, what I want is you actually to do, a healthy thing. During right. the commercials, I want you to think about everything I've said. I want okay. you to digest it. We'll come back and we're going to test you and see if you understand <laughs> okay. what I'm saying. And then we'll talk about your new film, Ruben and Ed, okay. which is probably playing God knows where. <laughs> Los Angeles. In Los Angeles yes. somewhere. Great. Oh, That's one right. theater. One theater. <laughs> oh, jeez. I haven't even made a movie yet. Mine's more successful than Ruben and Ed. I'll find out what the movie's about. You'll tell me the plot. Then I'll okay. listen to a little of your They've CD. Got one print. Oh, my God. Let me tell you how peculiar this guy is. He goes out and makes his own CDs. He presses them himself. No, no, no. You didn't? No, yeah. it was, this, was, this was done on uh, through Restless Records. Oh, it was. I, I do Restless publish Records. My, my own books, though. I know no, you we heard about books. that. Yeah. Yeah, I got to talk to you about that. <laughs> you don't want too much of a weirdo reputation in Hollywood. It's okay to be. No, eccentric. I know. I know what you mean. I know. You're yeah. good acting. Good looking guy. I'm looking at you now. You're <laughs> That's handsome. Right, yeah. You're a handsome man. You obviously right. take care of yourself. You yeah. look good. Yeah. I bet you got a nice physique. Take off your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We'll be back right after these words with Crispin Glover. Okay, right. Kawasaki Ninja Line. You're in Hollywood there, Crispin. What do you do? You drive a motorcycle? No, no, I drive a car. Oh, you do? Yeah. You should get into that motorcycle thing. You can hang out with... Um, <laughs> Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. And who's the other guy? Gary Busey. Yeah. And who's the guy? Uh, friend, friend, Billy Sa- Idol. Giuseppe Franco. Oh, right. Oh, right. Sly. <laughs> hang out with all those guys. You got any Hollywood friends? Um, uh, People that are... I guess so, sure. Yeah, big people in the industry? Um, I I don't know. I guess... Pee Wee? I actually have met him. Yeah, yeah I've met him. Have we go to a, never seen him beaten off? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you think that was strange, a guy masturbating in a movie theater? I, I, I well, I... Did you I, think that was peculiar behavior? I guess, Do you yeah. think that's alarming behavior on an individual? Well, I... A guy with a major career goes into a porno theater and masturbates? Did you find that peculiar or you think that's okay? Oh, I thought it was kind of... I thought it was funny. I mean, I, I thought there was something funny about it. You did? Yeah. See, that's what I'm, I'm afraid he might be doing stuff like this. No. You wouldn't do I, that, You know, right? I was hoping he would say, you know, I laugh because it was somebody who's messing up his career more than me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who do you think's messing up more than, than Pee Wee? Would Crispin be that person? <laughs> what motorcycle was Tom Cruise driving in the movie Top Gun uh, uh, with Kelly McGillis? Who would, who would it be? I, what bike? Yeah, I, I guess you're saying Kawasaki, Kawasaki, Kawasaki Ninja. Kawasaki. That's right. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is the fastest bike on the road. You went to high speeds? Do you like to take risks? Um, well, no. I, right. I, I, I don't like doing that. Just go with your fast. career, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. The Ninja Complete Line. Robin, try to explain to this gentleman what it does. I don't know how you are with the ladies. I don't know if you get a lot of them, but Robin. I don't know about what, you know, having like one of those steel tables with all the gadgets would do. Well, oh, Robin, thing. wouldn't you like to bang Crispin on a gynecological <laughs> table? Doesn't that sound like the ideal date? But I do like it when I see a man. On a motorcycle. You do. <laughs> do you do you ever get hot for a guy just because he's on that ninja? Oh yeah, you wonder about a guy who drives a motorcycle. You know they have the complete uh, ZX11. They got the uh, complete line of Kawasaki ZX11, which is the real big one. You think the, he's some kind of an outlaw? Right. 
Would you like to be an outlaw for the no. ladies? <laughs> <laughs> ZX11, ZX7R, ZX7, ZX6. They got them all. Stop by your local Kawasaki dealership today in New York. Action Motorsports, 136 Sunrise Highway in West Islip, and the King Motorcycle, 657 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn. It's Kawasaki. 10 past 8 o'clock, 92.3 K-Rock, WYSP, WJFK. I'm here with Crispin Glover. Now, the reason we're having him on is because, uh, well, I think he's odd and peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him on Letterman. I saw when you kicked Letterman in the face. You tried to. <laughs> yeah. But that was all kind of, were, you were in character. I didn't think you were being threatening. Right. No, I, I agree. Right. And you took that character. And by the way, the movie that Crispin is promoting, Reuben and Ed, yes. is based on that very character that kicked Letterman in the is face. Is that right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so him and his buddies were sitting around, and they wrote a film. Actually, They've taken a very thin the, thing. Yeah, 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 the whole movie's based on kicking Letterman in the face. It's actually not. The, actually, the script was written, being written before that happened. So, it's so here's cool. another one of these films that you put yourself in, uh -huh. where instead of getting in a big budget film, right, you're in a film, one of these art films, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, I mean, where, where is this going to go, Reuben and Ed? I, 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 well, you never know. I, who knows? I mean, I, 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 I I'll, I'll be in a, a big, big uh, budget. Karen thing. Black is in that with you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. I see. And what, yeah. does she play your love interest? No. <laughs> no, no. Are you nude in this film? Is she nude? No. Is there any nudity? Uh, I'm, I'm in a bathing suit at one point. What is it rated? Uh, I think it's PG. Oh, PG is it? It might be R, but I think it's, no, it's PG. There's yeah. no nudity whatsoever. No, no. Mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm. But no, there's actually, there's a girl in a bathing suit, so there's some, there's some uh, kind of uh, sex. I have tried know. to talk to Crispin even during the commercial. How is that? I, it's fine. I just, you know, I'd say to him, listen, guy, you're a good actor. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with you. You're good. You're just <laughs> odd. And because you're odd, you're, you're, you're turning down big movies. And, or, you're not really even turning down no, big movies. No, no. I don't you're not getting any offers from big movies? Well, why do you choose these movies? I, I some sometimes things come to me. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I go after things, and uh, if if a big movie comes along and it seems right, then I. Because this movie, I mean, but everybody keeps putting you in those little peculiar roles now when you're in one. Yeah, of people them. starting yeah. to think of you as just a peculiar guy. I well, I I, I, I agree. It's it, it's important. I should I should play somebody that isn't peculiar. Now you say in Back to the Future too. Right. Do you, uh, not only did you not appear in that because of the uh, money dispute, which we right. now understand, which makes a little more sense than what uh -huh. we thought before. Okay. <laughs> but uh, not a lot more sense, but a little more sense. <laughs> yes. And um, in that uh, film, they went ahead and used a sort of a double of you right. and tried to pretend like it was you, didn't they? And you sued uh, Universal Pictures, didn't right. you? Right. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, then they interspliced it with, with original footage, and then, yeah, so they put prosthetics, and I, yeah, I, yeah. Did I, you win I, your lawsuit? Well, what I'm, uh, I, I have to be careful about what I say. I say uh, it was settled with mutual mutual satisfaction. And that's all you can say about that's it. That's what I can say. So yeah. in other words, you received <laughs> money because they did use your image, in a sense, in uh, Back to the Future 2. Well, again, all I'm, what I'm, I, I can say that... All right, I don't repeat it. Okay, <laughs> very good. I see. So, all right, there they you go. They taught him well. Yes, they did. <laughs> so let's hope that he got more than the 100000 that they offered him for the second picture. <laughs> well, um, the movie is called Reuben and Ed. Right. It's uh, a Crispin Glover film. So we can't even hear, just rush out and see this. No, no one can even... You know, <laughs> it's, it's almost senseless to promote the stupid no, thing. No, it's opening in Los Angeles, and then it, and then it, it, it no, it, it won't. Can, be honest, you know what happens. He will be carrying it across the country. Yeah, like theater to theater. He's got one an print. Number. Let me tell you something. Whenever I have a guy in here, he comes in, he says, uh, "The the picture is starting out in New York and Los Angeles. It's a limited run, and then if it takes off from there, it will be released to the rest of the country." I go, "No, it's not. It's never going to be released to the rest well, of the country." Well, you know the way people think now is that yeah. they, they they the promotion for the initial release is there so people know about it when it comes out. On video today. That's right. Well, yeah. listen, let me tell you something, uh, to be quite honest with you. Yes. Unless you get a general release where the thing is released to the entire population right. in all of these uh, multiplexes and theaters, right. you don't stand the chance. Yeah. You don't stand no, the chance. I know, now, I know, I know what, what you're going to do. You're going to try and sell off the video and, <laughs> and try to break even. But good luck to you. God bless you. <laughs> That's the kind of career you want to have. Go ahead. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I know. I know exactly what you mean. You know, yeah. put, a, put a shot of a girl's ass in there. Maybe you stand the chance. Maybe we'll, we'll show it at the, there uh, is, there is, at the there Cinemax. Is at three in the morning. <laughs> All right? <laughs> now, so what I'm saying is, is that while you're odd and peculiar, have you ever heard his album? No. Have well, you, you did play it on the air, didn't you? Some of his CD. Now, listen to this. This is what he puts out. Now, you stop with all this. <laughs> People are going to get the idea you're peculiar. <laughs> I'm worried about you. Here, here you go. Listen to this. This is from his CD, the Crispin Glover CD. You did Letterman last night? Yes. How did that go? 
Oh, when when fine. He tra- he he wanted me to explain about the the first time I came on the show. Oh, and because uh, I thought you were banned from the Letterman show. No, no, I've been on. This is the fourth time I was on, but nobody will ever. Everybody always thinks of the the, the first. When you time. kick Dave in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Believe me, he deserved it. <laughs> Yesterday, I had my birthday. Everyone wished me good luck, so I got up on the table. You know, I might kick you now. I was going to say, are you still into this? <laughs> you know what? He turned beet red when I started playing it. You're even embarrassed by this. No, I, I'm, 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 I'm happy about really? that record. Yeah. So you say in the lyrics here, when I came back home, I turned on the answering machine. Am I correct? Uh, well, I th- it's a little bit out of order. I, yeah. I think I listened to the answering machine. The machine. All right, you felt clean because yeah. you listened to the messages on your answering machine? Yes. Yeah, very good. All right. <laughs> Fred, you uh, you never uh, fought Crispin for entrance into the rocket ship to Mars? No, but actually, I think these could go alongside uh, some of Jackie's tape. I see. Oh, Jackie sounded good to me. <laughs> I don't know about that. By the way, Geraldo Rivera just called in. He listened to the CD, and he wants to fight Crispin. Is that right? Three rounds of amateur boxing <laughs> as soon as he can get in the ring with him. <laughs> I mean, A-plus in the rhyming department, but an F-minus for what the hell you're trying to say here. I don't understand. What are you saying to people in this song? What do you mean you felt clean? Well, it was called the new clean song. Uh, I, the, the, the idea was that the, there, was a, there were all these, uh, these songs that had something to do with, you, with each other. Was the big problem is not equal the solution. The solution equals let it be. And all of the songs related to this big problem, and they had to figure, people had to figure out. And All right, listen to me. You want to yes. you you okay. listen to me or what? <laughs> You want to play games or you want to listen to me? <laughs> I'm not even sure that was English. What you said. That explanation was not English. I was going to say, I hope you're not understanding. <laughs> oh, man, I was completely right, let's start. You want to you go through that again or you want to give up? Uh, what is he saying? There was, See, this is there how was he an acted. equation there. See, this is my point. This is how you're acting on the set. <laughs> no, you're no. fine in the movies. You're good. You're damn good. Yes. Your problem is you're walking around with these theories. you got to stifle. No, that's, like E equals MC squared. You should have been raised by my parents. My that, parents would never allow me to think like no, this. that's that's that, that's not as a. Did you see a psychiatrist true. as a child? No, no. I see. I've been seeing a psychiatrist now. But and what does he say? What is the problem? Well, there are, <laughs> do you there talk are some, like, like this in there? No, 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 no. See, I mean, no. I have to admit, I, I put I put out a certain amount of of things which are enigmatic yes. uh, on per, per, purpose, and right. then in uh, when I'm on the set, I'm speaking very clearly. All right, and, okay, and, all right. Take and, it easy. And, no one's <laughs> no one's saying anything. Just calm down. Everybody, just calm down right now. All right. I just want to hear that that. <laughs> Equation again. You want to hear the equation? Yeah. All right. Explain slowly. Okay. What does it mean when a guy says he answered his answering machine, listened to the messages, and he felt very clean? <laughs> say it again and say it slow so we can follow you. Well, the, the to to I mean to explain that exactly Go would ahead. just seem ludicrous. I mean that would just <laughs> you're, you're telling me, but you're the one who wrote it. <laughs> but 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 to to explain the whole. Uh, I, idea makes m- ends up making more sense than if I went specifically. Right, explain the whole idea. Well, the whole idea was there were all these different songs. Where in the world it, or no, no, on no, your no, album? On, on the on the in his head. Album. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And they all had something. They all had something in common with each other. Right. Yes. A theme. Yes. Basically, and it was uh, 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 the, the the title of the album was the big problem does not equal the solution. Yes. The solution equals let it be. So. That the the solution was 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 given. All right, I've had enough of this. I've really had enough of so this. So we right. have. <laughs> I've really had enough. The solution. Now we have to determine x and y. Is that what we're saying? Yes, exactly. Right, I've exactly. had enough of this interview. I can't take it anymore. I got a lot of important things to get to. <laughs> Crispin Glover's new film is Reuben and Ed. Oh, yeah, I've got. A, I, I'm also having a book signing. Uh, oh yeah, let me let me talk about the book. Oh, signing. there's okay. a book. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I have three yeah. books. Yeah. All right. Now yeah. let me tell you about this. <laughs> Crispin writes his own books, but he, pu- he publishes them himself. Yes. He, what do you do now? You rip out different 
parts of other books. Well, and you <laughs> staple them into a, another book. No, no. And then you sell that in a leather binder. <laughs> yeah, well, rewriting at least would yeah, be. Yeah, you know, Crispin I, laughs at this stuff when I say it, but he's doing it. <laughs> you, you even think it's peculiar. You need to be around more normal people. What does your psychiatrist say? Don't you need to be around more normal people? No, no. I bet I, you have a bunch of oddball Hollywood yeah, friends. Yeah, who are your friends? A bunch of <laughs> losers who can't get any kind of movie deals and stuff, and you pick them up and you like, you like put them into stuff because you have an ability to get things done. Am I right? Well, I, no, no, no. I wouldn't no, but you have a lot true. of weirdos coming up to you with scripts who've never worked in the industry, and then you say, "Hey, I'll do it," and they go, "What do you think? I got Crispin Glover oh, yeah, in my Crispin film." Bro- 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 yeah. Doing my project, right? <laughs> um, well, well, I, I, you know, let me tell you something, yeah. my friend. When you take a piece of a book, right, and you staple it into another, it's book, from the, I, I, all of my stuff is in public domain. Normal people oh. call that a scrapbook. <laughs> you're, you're selling that as a... That's a Reader's Digest. You, yes, what is it, Gary? Well, I, I got Frank Stallone on the phone. You want me to call him back, or do you want to talk to him now? No, I think we want to speak to him, don't we? Of Chris, course. Do you mind? The, I know him. I know You know Frank. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. All right. Let me say... Bout. We'll get back to Crispin's book in a minute. You got a few minutes? Sure. All right. Crispin's book signing is Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Big and Tall Books in Los Angeles. God knows where that is. <laughs> on Beverly Boulevard. All right. Yeah. June 13th at Tower Books in New York, if you'd like to have your book signed by Christmas. Now, well, just what these books are, we don't know yet. Now, We're going to find any, out. Anybody <laughs> got these books in their possession besides Christmas? Yeah, I, I, I have some here. Do you want to see them? <laughs> well, hold on. Wait till we talk to Frank. Oh, okay. Hold on. That'll give us something to talk about. We'll be back right after these words. Okay. Crispin, you're nice and thin. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about Nutrisystem. <laughs> no, no. What do you do? You like macrobiotic stuff or something? I see I, you doing I, that. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no meat or anything. No, I eat, I eat meat. Oh, you do? Yeah. Well, that's not very macrobiotic. No, yeah, macro, you, you can eat, eat meat. Really? Yeah, yeah. I it's, didn't realize that. Yeah, it just has to be, like, uh, organically fed or something. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, man. He's something else. <laughs> I like him, though. I'm trying to help him. We got uh, Frank Stallone on the phone. Let me just get through the Nutrisystem. You know, one of the things I noticed yesterday, I, I turned to you, Robin, and I said it. Geraldo Rivera is nice and slender. Mm-hmm. And no fat on him. Same with Frank. Frank Stallone looked good in his trunks. He's a, He's got a nice build. He had, uh, had they a little bit. They both had little legs. It was very interesting. Yeah, very thin legs. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, the whole world is thin. When you're fat, let me tell you something. First of all, when you're fat, you know any fat people, Crispin? Sure. Sure. Right away, it says there's something psychologically wrong with you. And I know a lot of fat people now are trying to turn that image around and say, hey, there's nothing wrong with us. We love our bodies. They don't love their bodies. They're miserable with themselves. And it means there's something wrong with you. And if you don't believe me, ask Dr. Norris. <laughs> hey, there is, I am telling you, I, have, I know fat people. And at the root of every fat person, there is something psychologically wrong. Why do you think, Robin, fat people don't get hired for a lot of work? You never see obese people as CEO of a company. Well, they say that they're discriminated against. They're not. Well, in a way they are, but they should be. (laughs) The world was meant for people who create normal behavior. You understand, Crispin? This is a good lesson for you, too, in terms of your acting. Normal behavior. People are most comfortable with it. Now, what is normal, though, Hal? Normal is a nice weight. I don't mean a person who's 20, 20, 30 pounds over. I'm talking about obese people. This is Yeah, but what is normal? You know, you're saying that... There is a normal way to be. Okay. And everyone knows what it is. No one wants to face it. <laughs> no one wants to face it. Especially you, Crispin. There is a normal way to behave. You there think is a you're normal... normal? Yes. Very normal. Very Off sane. Off Off and on. You claim this is sane? <laughs> I don't think I'm doing anything so stupid. <laughs> Look, dial, my point is, if you want to fit in with the rest of the world right now, and there's never been a better time to call Nutrisystem because it's a dollar a day for a month here. Or something and this like is that. the last spring sale. This is it. All right? Lose that weight for a dollar a day, up to a month, plus the cost of Nutrisystem meals. Do it right now. Pick up that friggin' phone, you fat bastard. <laughs> Take advantage of Nutrisystem now, because this offer ends today. Individual weight loss varies. Weekly visits required. Participating centers only. If you think I'm kidding, think about it. You know there's something wrong with you. Now, Crispin over here, there's something wrong with him, but it didn't, <laughs> it didn't blossom into a, into a fatso thing. Yeah. thing. Something else. 
<laughs> he could very well have been a fat man. Believe me, <laughs> the same obsession he has with making his own books, yeah. that's what other people have with food. <laughs> Call 1-800-321-THIN. Service fee for total number of days due in Roman. 1-800-321-THIN. By the way, Jackie the Jokeman Martley next Wednesday, May 20th at the Funny Bone Comedy Club on South Street in Philadelphia. For jokes and information, dial 516-922-WINE. <laughs> Sunday night, May 24th, the night before Memorial Day at Chuckles in Mineola on Long Island. Check your cable guide for... Jackie's pay-per-view comedy special. Crispin Glover is here. I'll get right back to your book signing, but let me get Frank Stallone on the phone. I filled you in, Crispin. Crispin was not aware of the boxing match. Here he is, the champion, the gracious champion, the man who had the wit about him when he won decisively in the fight. He turned to Geraldo. He turned to the cameras and said, hey, Geraldo took a hell of a punch. He's a hell of a guy. You showed some class yesterday. You know that? Good morning, Howard. Good morning. You showed some... How are you feeling today, Chan? I think I busted my right hand. Are you serious? Yeah, I got in that thing wrapped up. Yeah. Are you kidding? Well, I noticed when I shook your hand goodbye, you uh, kind of sh shied away and pulled yeah, your hand back. Yeah, it's very sore. Yeah. Really? Let me tell you something, Howard. This thing was no... Uh, as you could see, this was no play patty cake. No. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I, I really got to say this, and I hope it comes across in a sincere fashion. When you guys... When we were planning for the fight, and believe me, it was a pain in the ass, you know, getting the whole thing together. But when it finally got together, and you guys stepped in the ring, I was still having a good time with it. After you threw the first punch, and you smacked Geraldo in the face, mm -hmm. and his face just turned red, and then I saw you guys going at it, yeah. I, was, I was flipping out. I couldn't believe how real it was and how it intense it was. It totally was totally 100% real. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like, it was some fight. And I, I mean that. And I mean, you know, after it's all said and done, we had a lot of ballyhoo. But let me tell you something. This guy is a tough... He is. He really, I, I really got to say something. You know, I, I look, I don't know. I mean, I hit him with really hard shots, Howard, and he is tough. He came back. He's game. He's very tough. Well, you know what it is? You know how you hear after fights, the fighters go, hey, the guy was very tough. And you figure they just say that. I'm telling you, this Geraldo took punches and blows. He should have been knocked out the right. first round. The guy kept coming back. It was unbelievable. He's got a million dollars worth of guts, and I really respect him. And I'll tell you what, there was no winner or loser because you know what? There really wasn't. Because when, when it's all said and done, when people see this, this guy, when people, you know, say he does this and, they, you know, they, this guy was totally credible. He came to fight. He wasn't playing games. He was outweighed a little bit. And he's not that small. You know, people were saying he's not that no, small. No, he's almost the same height as you. In fact, you guys are about an inch apart in height, maybe two inches. Yeah. And uh, you have about the same reach. I was looking at the stats. And the thing is that... Um, he can take a punch, I'll tell you that. Yeah, the guy, I mean... Robin, when you saw Geraldo's face after the first round, he was wobbling. Did you think he was going to get up for the after second? After that first exchange that left hook yeah i thought this is well, yeah, well, will quit yep yeah, it was unbelievable <laughs> what's the matter someone in your room yeah. you want to get on the other line Good. who is that Geraldo? no <laughs> we're walking on live on the radio frank you got to talk to us you can't talk to okay that was tom patty my trainer oh don't put him on the phone <laughs> uh, don't put tom on the he phone. won't shut up <laughs> <laughs> i'll never get a word in with you i know tom patty <laughs> um anyway so the point is this I was watching the fight, but the most incredible scene, and I don't have a, a... By the way, we rushed into the editing studio last night so we could get the uh, show right on the air. Um, because the fight was so incredible. It was 100% real. Oh. And I didn't... I, I'll tell you, you the truth, You thought it was Frank. a joke, and I just want to say I one thing. I thought you guys would go in there and play around like no. it was an exhibition. No, yeah. he came to fight. No, Geraldo knew that the second you came out, man. And you were, like, relentless. I mean, you just kept going in and in and in. There was a lot of punches thrown. You didn't yeah. give him a minute to breathe. And um, you got you see, you got to watch the fight in particular. you got to watch it this, uh, you know, when we oh, air I'll it. I'll definitely go watch it. Because Len Berman is calling the fight, and he's just saying, it's all Stallone, Stallone, it's Stallone. It's unbelievable what's going on. I was, like, almost hiding my eyes. It got so ridiculous. But Geraldo guys... was throwing a lot of punches. No, he did. I mean, I looked at your body afterwards, man. You were you were there cut up. There was one incredible moment. Yeah, I got Frank, cuts all over my body now. I know. But Frank had knocked Geraldo into the corner. Yeah. And then he went got off balance and Geraldo whipped him around. Yeah. And then Frank was in the corner and yeah. Geraldo was pummeling him. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was just unbelievable. And so so the point was, after we got all done and we left, I I pulled the car out. I, I'm looking outside. All of a sudden, I see Frank leaving the building. I'm trying to call thousands him. Thousands of people outside. There were thousands of people outside on the street here on, on 8th Avenue. Uh -huh. Frank walks out, holds his championship belt with my stupid picture on it <laughs> over his head. Yeah. The people start cheering. Frank starts to take a victory walk down 8th Avenue. So Tom Patty, his trainer, goes in front of Frank to stop all the cabs and everything because Frank is literally going to walk out in the middle of traffic. This cab almost hits Tom Patty. He's like, you know, this is New York. We don't stop for anything. Frank was walking down the street with the people cheering him. It was a yeah. scene like right out of the movies. 
I'm telling you, man. And you know, and Tom and I were walking around that afternoon with the belt and yeah. the jacket on. Did yep. you wear your jacket now? Yeah. It, now it's a it's an air, it's a treasure that jacket. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. People everywhere. I must once was stopped by 300 people on the street going. Cops, everybody, hey, man, we heard the fight. Blah, 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 blah. And you yep. know what? Wait till it hits the air. And everyone kept saying, boy, Geraldo's got a lot of heart. Yeah, well, wait till they see how much heart he had. I you, mean, it's do unbelievable. Do you remember the promise you made to Geraldo? What was the promise? You don't remember what you I said. know what I said to him, but don't, but don't bring that up. Oh. <laughs> I said to Geraldo back in the dressing room because I really felt bad for him because he could really, you know, I mean, actually, I felt kind of good for him because... Well, he didn't feel bad. No, I mean, he Geraldo was very proud of that fight, and he should be. He's damn right. And, you know, and you know, everyone was saying, everyone was saying... Uh, Oh, you know, Geraldo's going to, you know, he's real vain about his nose. Did you see his nose at the end of the Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm dying to see his face today. But right. I'm telling you right now, he took the punches, and I cracked him in the nose, and he hit me in the nose a few times, too. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, he took it like a man. He's very tough. Let me tell you something. You know how Geraldo insisted on the headgear and everything? He well, sure he had it. He sure, well, he says he isn't because he would have been brain dead otherwise. But he said, <laughs> he said, this is kind of funny, at one point, you're going to see, when you see the tape, you're going to see it. You hit him so hard. It spun around. It spun around, and his nose was sticking out through the ear, <laughs> the ear hole. Yeah. And um, I just said, "We got to." I uh, this this is ridiculous. These no, guys can't keep going. On. Robin was getting grossed out. Yeah, I, I mean, was. It, was, it was wild, man, because we were that close to you, and it was just like, "Oh man, I like these two guys. I don't want to see them kill each yeah, other." Yeah, I really felt bad. Well, you know, you get two Latin hot-blooded guys in there and fighting, and I'll tell you right now, when people see this. They're going to see that this was not playing games. You know what else you're going to see? What? By the way, we also got uh, extreme close-ups of you guys in the corner during, oh, really? between rounds. Wait till you see this, man. It's going to look real. And you know something, man? Yeah. He would If he would have fought Gordon Liddy or any of those guys, he would have knocked him out. Well, yeah. that's what he said. He said, I, I know he would have. why I couldn't fight G. Gordon Liddy. Yeah. It would have been too much of a mismatch. Already, uh, you know who challenged uh, Geraldo? Who? Denny Terrio from Dance Fever. <laughs> he killed him. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Denny wants to fight Denny him. Terrio. Three rounds. I'm going to call Geraldo uh, tomorrow. Geraldo's tough. Man. Danny Terrio says you didn't dance enough. See, he can dance. <laughs> yeah, he says he can dance away from it. He really wants to fight Geraldo. What do you think of my robe and trunks, Howard? Uh, I thought they were real nice. I yeah. thought Geraldo's robe and trunks were real nice. And I'll tell you one thing that you did that was really cool. What? After the fight and you got the unanimous decision, mm -hmm. which, by the way, was actually one of the judges called it close because of the knockdown. There wasn't a knockdown. It was a slip. You know right, that. I, I thought, thought it was, it was a slip. A it, it was 100% slip. The judge called it a knockdown, though. You know, I talked to him later. He said, listen, you know, Arthur was saying, I know, you know, he said, well, he knew it was a slip. He said, it's TV. But oh, it was a total. He, he's a total pro. Come on. Huh? He's a total pro. No, but it was a slip. You know I didn't get I, that. Right. I saw your legs got tangled up. I got tangled up. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was the Frank Stallone fact. Like, you're going to fall off the stage. I was trying to do the ankles. Ollie Shuffle. Freddie ran out to try to break one of your ankles. I was trying to do the Ollie Shuffle. <laughs> so anyway, um, what a really cool move was, so Geraldo was in his corner, and they announced the winner, and Frank, the first time he got on camera after they announced the winner, he just says, hey, I want to say a few things about Geraldo, all the stuff he's saying now, how brave he is and how incredible if we was. I was watching Geraldo because I knew he wasn't going to come over to the camera because I think he, like, he was like he was waiting for Frank to really mouth off and say some stuff. And as soon as Frank started being gracious, yeah. Geraldo's eyes lit up and uh, he smiled and he walked over to the cameras and he wanted to get in on it yeah. because he saw that Frank was a human being and was being nice about the win, you know? Listen, man, this guy has nothing ever, ever in his life to be ashamed of, because I'll tell you right now... I never saw you humble before. It was the first time. No, I'm a very humble I mean, person. It was very it was shocking. Just, I was wired up before the fight, you know? No, but it, well, come on, you know how you are. You I, guys were weird before the fight. Yeah, you really well, were. Well, you know, that's why, because the thing is... I know, heard you try to punch Dan Foreman in the face when he came into the dressing room. I did room, punch did Dan Foreman. You did, I know. I, know I you thought did. it was R. Crumb from Zap Comics. <laughs> he takes a pretty good punch, though, doesn't he? Yeah, Dan has no chin, though. He can't take a <laughs> he shot. He can't take a shot. <laughs> but, uh, and also, I thought the fight was going to break up over whether or not you could wear 16-ounce gloves and headgear. I know Tom Patty, I heard, got in between was... Well, Tom was sticking up for his fighter, man. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know aren't what? you glad you had those 16-ounce gloves yeah, on now? It, it Actually, been a mess. no, because they weighed like hand grenades. <laughs> You would have really heard her. Yeah, I mean, it would have been ridiculous. And by the way, Frank was in his dressing room under the sun lamp before he went out. <laughs> and uh, right up until fight time, believe it or not, which is a really cool move, I think. <laughs> but you know what else, man? Seeing you walk down 8th Avenue, man, you were unbelievable. I'm telling you, Howard. Thousands of people were all over pumped? you. I'm telling you, Howard. I mean, we were wearing a jacket. We went, and you know what we did after that? What? We went to a function at a restaurant, and they had two or three world champions there that they were giving awards. Yeah, I know. You were running... He, and we Frank, walked into the function with my championship belt. Yeah. We, and we started getting more pressed than the world champions. <laughs> what was funny, too, is Michael Spinks was there, and that yeah. was kind of neat. 
And uh, Frank was nice guy. Frank was running around the gym, going, "Is anybody here a a news photographer? I want a picture with the champ. I want a picture of the champ." Meanwhile, we weren't allowed to bring in any news photographers because of Geraldo. Geraldo said no way. Uh, I thought you know everyone said it was you that didn't want to. Bring no, it anybody. wasn't me. No, all the press was outside. I was going to release a picture to the press today to promote the uh, you know the fight coming up on TV. Mm-hmm. But uh, they, you know, Geraldo's people made us sign a deal that we wouldn't do it. Do you know what? This is going to be your highest rating show you ever had. I predict a uh, 40 share. This is going to be the high, because I'm going to tell you something, man. I woke up, and, 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 you know, you can verify it. I'm, my hand is wrapped up. I mean, there were punches. I mean, I, d- listen, Frank. Yes, sir. Nobody's denying this. I mean, even Len Berman was on uh, Channel 4 Sports last night in New York saying he called the fight. He says this was real boxing. He's one of the best matches he's seen. It was, because you know what? It was real fast, and, but it threw a lot of punches. I'm telling you. And by the way, so Frank's walking down the street with his, with his belt over yeah. his head. All of a sudden, I see him writing girls' phone numbers on the back of the belt. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, I was hey, trying to chase the ring girl around. So. Hey, uh, Frank, what's the deal? Did you end up uh, going home with that model, Rocky, Raquel? No. Oh, man. No. She was beautiful. Yeah, who did you end up getting that night? Did you get anyone last Nothing. night? Nothing. I ended up going to Planet Hollywood eating his spare ribs. Are you exhausted? Huh? Are you are you exhausted? You well, I'm a little sore today. You know, my back and arms are a little cut up. Right. Yeah. From from the ropes, but you know, I'm going to tell you right now. And first, of all, I want to say hello to Crispin. We Hi. were going to do a movie together. He's a yeah, wonderful he, guy. Uh, he was he was actually uh, up for for Ruben and Ed, and, That's and right. the director w- wanted him, but they wouldn't let him. Uh, yeah. They, they, they just the, the money people wouldn't let that. They wouldn't. Uh, they didn't think let me tell you something. From what I'm gathering from Crispin, there was no money people. <laughs> I don't think anybody got paid. And then on I that bumped film. into Crispin when I was shooting Hudson Hawk in Hoboken. Right. 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 Yeah. But I'll tell you something, Howard. Uh, first of all, hello, Crispin. How Hi, are you? Hart. Good. Good, man. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing. This this was, and, you know, I've been in a lot of amateur fights. You know, and Geraldo hadn't been, I hadn't been in a ring in 12 years. Right. And uh, I've been in a lot of fights. I'll tell you what, this was this was one of the hardest fights because he was relentless. I thought, you know, when I hit him a few of those shots, I said, you know, I didn't know anything about Geraldo. And I said, you know, I think he's going to, I think he's hurt. He's going to go down. But, man, he kept coming back. I know. Were you shocked that he kept coming? I thought second uh, round he right was out. I was shocked. I thought second round, that yeah. was it. The fight was over. I thought about and 20 seconds thought, in. And then we thought, all right, they'll coast through the third round. No, we no. didn't coast at all. <laughs> in fact, the only thing, and uh, i got to tell you something. For a guy who smokes and drinks like Frank does, i got to say, he didn't really seem, I mean, he, he was tied he was third a, round. He was together. But he was together. He yeah. kept it together. You look good, too. Well, all I said was at the end, you know, we were in the car. I said, thank goodness you smoke and drank. You would have killed Robin. You know, yeah, really. I'll tell you, Robin's face. Oh, I was, when I was sitting I was there, it was devastated. like that dumbfounded look, like holy crap! Yeah, you know I what was amazing? What you were doing when you got uh, when you slipped and fell down, yeah. and they called it a knockdown. You turned to me in the middle of the fight and started arguing with me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unbelievable. I said, Howard, I thought the fix was in. Well, <laughs> let me say something, Frank. You're a credit to uh, smokers and drinkers and, well, no, and abusers all Howard, over the place. Everywhere. Let me tell you something, Howard. And I will tell you honestly, and and, and I and I and I give this as a fair warning to everybody. I hadn't had a cigarette, I hadn't had a drink, I hadn't touched a girl in almost three weeks, two and a half weeks since the day we trained. I mean, I was real serious about this because I know... So you're ready to explode. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to explode. I'm go- when I go to England, man, I'm just going to be rape and pillage, you know? Yeah, I know. It's going to be... It's- watch out. Watch out because Frank is coming in. Watch he- out, Lady Di. No, go I have, ahead and I have like, backup. I have, like, blowback. Oh, so, did, you, like- did you call your brother and tell him you won? No, he's in Europe. Did you call your mother? My mother called up. Everyone said, oh, my Frankie won. Yeah, she was excited, well, she right? She hates fight. Hey, did your mother get upset with you about Let me tell you something. No, I haven't spoken to my mother yet, but I'm going to tell you something. I always thought, you know, when you watch boxing on TV, I feel, eh, even I could get in the ring and maybe punch a guy a couple Forget of times. It. Let me tell you something. After seeing that, I never would want to fight yeah. anybody. I looked at, <laughs> at Michael and Tyrone at that point. I said, there's some sport you guys picked. Yeah, I mean, I, I, tell you something. You know, I said Jessica, to Michael Spinks, I, after this, Hunt. Michael Spinks was impressed with this fight. Jessica Hahn like, called up and she said I was like this and this. To me, she's nothing but a silicone mattress. Oh dear! <laughs> oh, man. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you're the champ of the world. That Remember girl, that. that girl, bad mouthed me on the air, betting against me, hoping Geraldo kicked my ass. And I'm telling you right now, her, she's over. Her love phone. Yeah. Has been cut off. Okay? You, will not, you will not call Love Phone anymore. <laughs> I will not call Love Phone. <laughs> I wish she was in the ring. I knocked the silicone out of her mouth. <laughs> oh. But I'm going to tell you right now, she bet against me. Right. And she was ungracious. I collected a lot of money yesterday. I know you did. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people, I know I know Jackie and the other guys were like kind of goofing and stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, you know, Jessica Hahn was the only one 
that really was kind of vindictive. And I've never done anything wrong with her other than having fun. Ah, and, you were a little harsh with her. So what? You know what? You're the champ of the world yeah, now. Right. You're on and top of the world. Is, and that belt you don't is have beautiful. To, you don't have to break down now and start attacking. <laughs> See, you, you got your belt, Frank. You got your belt, Frank. <laughs> you know why? why? That belt is beautiful. Let me tell you something, man. Wear it proudly, my friend. I will, but I mean... <laughs> You'll I'm be not, arrested, I'm, but I'm wear not, it proudly. Howard, Let me tell you something. Howard, Michael I'm Spinks, not bad-mouthing Jessica, but she was the only one that was really vindictive against me. There was no reason. Well, she was hurt because, you know what I think? Because you didn't want her sexually. Of course I don't. And but yeah, but you know what? I like that, hurts hurts a heavy bag. that hurts a girl. That hurts a girl. You User's know that. a speed bag. Oh. All right. But yeah, I'm you're the champ. You, Howard. You're Go the ahead. champ. Tell Frank what you promised Geraldo after the All fight. right. And let me just say this, too. I turned to Michael Spinks after the fight, after we were leaving. I, I shook his hand goodbye. He said, I said, boy, that was really some fight. He says, that was absolutely yeah. a fabulous fight. Michael Spinks? Yeah. yeah. And he said, he said um, Frank and Geraldo did a tremendous job. They were tremendous boxing. And I said, you know, it's insane. I never realized th these guys are crazy. Yeah. Frank's crazy and Geraldo's crazy. And he started laughing because he's just as crazy That's as them. Right. He gets Michael, hey, Michael's too. a world champion, man. And, uh, you know, and I like Michael. Lot. He's a nice guy. Well, and, Michael uh, says he wants to go up against you. He says, it. He, he says, are you defending the belt? I'll, go up said he wanted to go I'll be wearing a suit of armor and like a, <laughs> yeah. a battle axe. 30 ounce gloves. 30, forget. But I'll tell you, you really get a healthy respect for that sport. Anyone yeah. that gets in the ring. Anyone gets in the cra ring, I'm staying away from. No. Geraldo, I even looked at Geraldo afterwards. I was in his dressing room. He just finished showering and I walked up to him and I said, you know, hey, I got to tell you something, man. You know, I, I've seen guys say, hey, they have a lot of respect for a guy who goes in the ring and all this. I said, unbelievable what you did. Because I always thought Geraldo was a bit of a jerk. I thought it. it was all, all talk. Yeah, Geraldo you know, was very gracious. Man. Yeah, and I, I just, and you know, with him, with his, uh, you know, uh, opening up Al Capone's vault and all that, and, and holding weapons on well, the air, being macho. you know what my problem was, that he's every time something happens, yeah. he's, you know, threatening to kick people's asses. Yeah, right. But so, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he, he can do it. He can do it. Yeah, so, I mean, he really can do it. He's 48 years old, man. Yeah, I know. He's an old man. And the guy... Think this thing. The guy does two TV shows a day. He works like a maniac. He, but he, but he was committed, man, because he went into the gym. He made the time to get in shape. Because you know what? If he wasn't in shape, he could have never die. I'd like to talk to him. I'd love to say something to him. Yeah, well, you know what? He's calling in tomorrow so he can interview me for his TV show. We're going to do it on the air. Is he there? Can you uh, call him? Well, yeah, we can do it tomorrow if you want. Yeah, because I'd really like to. I mean, and I'm just saying, I'm very, you know... Howard, you know, I act crazy sometimes and stuff, but, you know, I, I am, I, I'm a very humanistic person, and I realize that the plight some people have to go through, and it was hey, you a very humbling experience. You are a, it was humbling, wasn't it? You were a changed man afterwards. You know, because you came up, and you were very humbled, Howard. Yeah, I know. I was, I was really, uh, I was really quite humbled. So <laughs> I was really in shock. Thought, I felt real bad for you guys, and I felt like, wow, these guys really went at it. Because yeah. you said... Because you know what Geraldo said to me in the dressing room? He says, I can't believe what a fight that was. And you know what he said? What? He says... Did it all for your stupid TV show? Yeah, your show. That's even not, I can't even your stupid TV, TV show. I go, I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the other the other cool thing was too. I said to Geraldo, I turned to him and I just said, you know something, man? I'm not going to say another bad word about you on the air. I said, I'm afraid to. You're a nut. No, he's he's a, he's a stand up guy. I'll and I even right went now. into his dressing room and his and the guys who hang around with him, they go, I'm telling you, Geraldo, you won the last two rounds. I'm telling I you. I know they, they were all doing that whole fight. They thing. were all doing that fight thing, and even Geraldo <laughs> looked at him like, oh, listen, <laughs> give us a I didn't win the last two rounds, you jerks. <laughs> no, but. No, the thing was, man, he was, and, you know, the guy, listen, we, we put it on the line, and like, like you said, I mean, he's a major known national figure, yeah. so for, for him to really go on the line. Yeah, I was stunned, you know, you know that look of, like, I was sort of stunned? Yeah. I mean, I was actually wondering if anyone got killed, would I go to jail? That's what I, you know, <laughs> you were like, saying Howard was going, yeah. I'm a TV host, what is this? I, I created a monster. Yeah, what am I doing? And you know something, Howard, and yeah. there was no, I remember, and I kept saying this all during the, the press stuff. There was no animosity. So you can imagine what it's like when two people go in the really ring and they don't like Yeah, them. really hating each other. Imagine if you and Jessica went in the ring. Oh, oh that'd, be, that'd be the fastest fight you ever saw in your well, life. Well, the next fight, if Geraldo will agree, will be Denny Terrio versus uh, Geraldo Rivera. No, it should be Denny Terrio versus Jessica. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I love to see, the fight I would love to see would be Dice Let me tell you and something. Arsenio. Yeah, right. Let me tell you something. Uh, when the fight airs, I watched the tape of it yesterday. How's we it look? Uh, it looks awesome. It's unbelievable. Wait till you see it. You're going to love it. Are you it. real proud of it? I'm very, very proud of I'm it. I'm real proud, Howard, to have done it. I'm, I'm, not proud proud that that, I'm not proud that Channel 9 didn't give me a fourth camera, but you know what? It worked out just it fine. It was okay. Our you know, director came through. All the people at Channel 9 who, who helped us, all the people at this radio station that uh, yeah. did the audio was incredible. So, I, I mean, like, it worked out great. You know, and the thing is, man, i got to tell you something, and i got to tell the people in the audience, that is a, when they see it, that is a very, 
very expensive belt. That's not a piece of, that's a real world champion belt. That's right. I know that was important to Frank. Yeah, he really wanted that belt. But let me tell you something. I didn't know about that belt. Hey, next fight is going to be uh, Crispin and Bob Zemeckis. (laughs) They're going in the ring together, all right? Really? Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, Howard, is your mother going to be grossed out when she sees it? Um, I'm sure she will. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty gross. You know, if you guys hadn't been wearing that headgear, it would have even been more gross. Did downtown Ronnie call up? Uh, No, no, downtown Ronnie hasn't called up, but, uh, you know, all the guys uh, are very proud of you. Uh, Well, I'm very proud to have done it, and, uh, again, I take my hat. You're glad you did it, right? I'm glad I did it, and I got to tell you something. You know, I'm 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 glad I did it. I'm proud of uh, Geraldo, man. Geraldo's a 150 percent to me. Well, I'll be airing the fight, uh, and then Geraldo's going to air the fight on his show yeah, as well. Yeah, so it's going to get a lot of. Is he really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this is it was just a guess, and uh, but I but how, man, we came in the ring, man, wearing our we were wearing our trunks, yep. man. We wore badges. Everyone will see it. A hey, champ, you were great. Okay, Howard. All right, thanks. Frank. I'll speak to you tomorrow. I'll try and line up be, uh, me, you, and Geraldo. Oh, that'd be great. All right, man. Thanks. All right, God bless. Right. All right. Bye-bye. The, the world uh, champion, Frank Stallone, ladies and gentlemen. Crispin Glover. Of the Howard Stern Boxing Council. <laughs> yeah, the Howard Stern Boxing Association, <laughs> HSBA. <laughs> Crispin Glover's like, what the hell's going on? I'm trying to promote a book. <laughs> These guys are really talking boxing. <laughs> don't worry, Crispin. You don't have to get in the ring. <laughs> You into the sweet science? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Crispin Glover. Let me take a short break, then we'll, we'll wrap up, and I'll give you a couple of plugs on where you're going to sign your okay. book. And we'll... Great. All right? Okay. All right. <laughs> he seems pretty happy. <laughs> he's, ha- he's happy just to be somewhere. All right. We'll be back right after this. It's 20. <laughs> Pressure, temperature, and wear. And it wears well beyond the limits of human endurance. Swiss made since 1860. Tag Hoyer. Go so to you Fortunoff. may not survive, but your watch will? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Hey, you know who wears this watch? Roseanne's gynecologist. Is that? Yeah, he wears one of these, so when he has to dive deep, <laughs> it, it's, it's resistant. He's gone down. Oh, yeah, he's gone down 660 <laughs> feet easy. Roseanne, I'm here, and the watch is still ticking. <laughs> wow, and stuff. Wow, is it still ticking? I Can can't you say my fallopian tubes yet? I'm, fi- I'm fixing your fallopian tubes right now. Let me check the time, though. <laughs> Uh, How much longer? Not too much longer. According to my tag Hoyer, Roseanne, everything is just fine. Okay, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> tag Hoyer, yes, and Fortune Office. Source, Fifth Avenue, Westbury, New York, Wayne Woodbridge, and Primus, New Jersey. Only buy from Fortune Office. Don't forget about their great watch repair department. <laughs> Uh, men's Hair Now is here. Crispin, just take a look at this. I'm going to give you a little demonstration. Okay. These people are from Men's Hair Now. Men's Hair Now, bring them in, Gary. Oh, we have another demonstration? Yeah, I believe so. What, what I am going to do is, you know how bad toupees are and hair weaves and all that yes. stuff? Okay, you've seen some pretty bad ones. Don't you think Burt Reynolds would have a good toupee? I mean, he's got a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And it's bad, right? <laughs> all right, there's something called the Dermabond process, perfected by Men's Hair Now. People are going to walk in. One of them... Okay. This isn't a choice, Howard. It's just an example. Oh, an example. Oh, okay. no choice. All right. Look at this guy. Would you ever tell that that's not his real hair? Seriously, look at that. Look at that. I mean, you have a goofy hairdo. I mean, it's, it's like, like a Don King thing. Look at that. And you even have headphones on, and it doesn't disrupt you, no does way. it? No do anything. Wow, look at you. You look great. Now, how was life before? You're a young guy. What age did you go bald? I started going bull when I was about 18. Oh, what a wow. drag. And you're a good-looking guy. I mean, I'm 26 now. I mean, I mean nobody even yeah, thinks so. Yeah, you must have looked older. Yeah. I mean, look how good this guy yeah. looks. Hey, seriously, Crispin, look at that. Yeah. Not for nothing, but I mean, <laughs> I'd do anything with it. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. Did you say not for nothing? Not for nothing. You know, that's what Gary uh, <laughs> Delabate always says, not for nothing. <laughs> I got it from Gary. You must be Italian, are you? Yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, I have to tell you, this is the woman from Men's Hair Now. You uh, were You created this, right? That is beautiful work. You're a genius. Take a bow on the radio. Go ahead, say something. Well, we work very hard in men's hair now, and I... Look at this guy. Revolutionized the whole... Got a better head of hair than me. Why can't you get a hold of Burt Reynolds? <laughs> why can't you... Seriously, why isn't Burt Reynolds one of your clients? Look at that. Burt Reynolds would love to have a head of hair like that. Look at, what, let me see. Run your fingers through that. Are you kidding me? Talk about your experiences at your uh, spring break. <laughs> ah, like, for example, after I had gotten the process done, I went to uh, Daytona Beach spring break. Yeah. And um, I was kind of nervous. Of course. Yeah, but, go ahead. Um, that's, the, that's the point of the story. I mean, yeah. I mean, this one girl had taken her hands, I mean, run through my hair. And at first I had gotten nervous. I jumped up. But right. I mean, got right back into it. And same thing, pulling my and hair. Did you try to pays and stuff she was before? She pulling that? your no, hair? Pulling. I mean, you could wow. pull on it. You could do anything you want. It's incredible. I mean, nobody You're happy now, right? Happy. You got a life. Happy. You're a good-looking guy, I'm telling <laughs> you. I can picture you bald. You'd be a mess. No way. Probably a 
Look like I, I, like, I, I like myself better now than when before I got it done. You like your 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 Dermabon hair yep. better than your old hair. Absolutely. Confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and about the I tell you now I mean I used to be heavy and you know. See now you fixed mustard. yourself now I'm like up. working out. I'm doing everything. You know? Can you guys <laughs> Dermabon my pubic hair? Seriously, my, I wish my pubic hair looked that good, Robin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at it, like a nice mohawk or something. <laughs> you, you look I damn good. Hairstyle, that longer hair in the back, and now. now I don't you know, give you name because then people will know you have no, fake hair. Not. You, I'm telling you, man, you've gotten away with it. Yeah, you look fat. Fabulous. Tell him, My Crispin. girlfriend doesn't know. Crispin, you're in movies. Go ahead, yeah, tell him. It does. It looks it looks extremely real. Thank you. I guess, like I said, I take you would not with... know that he was a bald guy. Come no, on. No. Not for nothing. My girlfriend does not know. Not I mean, not I take showers nothing. with her. Hey, not, not for, for nothing. nothing. Thank you. <laughs> Your no, girlfriend thank you. doesn't know. He, doesn't he says his girlfriend <laughs> doesn't know. Your girlfriend does not I, like know. I said I take showers with her. She doesn't even know. You take showers with us. She does not know. You Nobody got any knows. video of that? I take a shower with you. you see, really? <laughs> take a shower hey, listen, man, I don't want to take a shower careful. with you. You're cute, but I don't want to take a shower <laughs> with you. Nothing. How about Robin? Eh? <laughs> well, listen, congratulations <laughs> to Men's much. Hair Now again. I am totally amazed by your work. I am very proud to uh, be associated with you. Best. Now, how long does this take? How long does it take for a guy to have a head of hair like that? Uh, from inception? Yeah. Well, they first come in for a consultation. Kevin, of course, was his consultant. Yes. And uh, seven weeks after. Uh, you guys are artists. After, yeah, we're very honest. We uh, walk him through the consultation. We show him exactly. And he himself had seen. Let me give the clients. number. You've said enough. I'm telling you. You've said enough. I'm, I'm giving them, Everyone's convinced. I, I am telling you, I have a full head of hair. I'm going to go to you guys. Oh, we have some. <laughs> All right, let me give the number. Bring someone today that looks like you. All right. Jesus. <laughs> 1-800-835-HAIR. H-A-I-R. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed by uh, how... I'm well, amazed. Good. I'm still amazed. Oh, good for you. I'm amazed every day. 1-800-835-HAIR. 1-800-835-HAIR. It's men's hair now with the Dermabon process. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. Thank you. You've done beautiful nice work. Again. Nice to Thank see you. you. Bring in more examples like this. Well, we will. We have three. They, it was too early. Really? All right, do it again some other time. What I'm very mad. Of? She's great with the hair. She's great with the hair, but when she starts talking, i got to throw her right out of the studio. <laughs> It's like the Mona Lisa on that guy's head. <laughs> Did you see that? How beautiful that guy looked? Oh, it's a great... You wouldn't believe that somebody would do that. And I'm watching... hair that wasn't real. Robin, I swear to God, Crispin, I'm watching uh, Entertainment Tonight last night. They have Steve Allen on. He has a thing oh, crawling around on his head. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's still alive. I know. It looks like a squirrel. Now, why wouldn't he go to men's hair now? <laughs> anyway, let me just... Let me uh, wrap it up with Crispin Glover, because he's been sitting here patiently, and the guy has something to promote. He's in a movie called Reuben and Ed. Right. By the way, I just met the... Uh, publicist on the movie. Boy, is she a hot little <laughs> minx. Have you banged her yet? <laughs> no, no, I just met her. Wow. She is tall. What I saw a very tall girl in the hall. Is that her? Explain Hollywood to me, Robin. Yes. What, what, what is it? A publicist is always like a beautiful woman? Yes, haven't you noticed that? Why is that? <laughs> Why not? What is that all about? What is a publicist? I mean, what qualifications do you have? <laughs> yeah, to I'm have? saying. I mean, do you need do you need college for that job or anything? It seems like an important job. I mean, what you want is somebody who can get through a closed door. Gary, bring her in. See? Gotta, <laughs> yeah, it's true. She gets right through. <laughs> Crispin, this new movie, Ruben and Ed, I know you're very excited about it. <laughs> God bless you. I hope everyone goes and sees it. It's well, kind of hard when it's in one theater. But, uh, hey, what is your name? <laughs> Desiree. Desiree. And Jesus. they're all named Desiree. <laughs> you are just... Hi there. You're perfect for me. How tall are you, Desiree? 5'10". Look at you. Do you have a model? <laughs> Do you have a model? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> you got a boyfriend? Five. You have five boyfriends? No. Do you have a boyfriend? Sort of. I don't know. Yeah? I'm not sure yet. I'd like to ask you out on a date, if I may. You're married. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. My wife died <laughs> a week ago in a horrible, uh, in the L.A. riots. Oh, really? She was pulled out of her truck and beaten. I, oh, <laughs> she was driving a truck? Oh, yeah. Oh, I make her drive a truck. <laughs> and she unfortunately died, was hit in the brick by uh, one of those hooligans. <laughs> those leotards make me forget I'm married. Leotards? What is that? That's a unit. That's a, no, that ain't no tight. That's a unitard. That's a unitard. Is it? Right I think she's got a sweater and some leggings on. <laughs> Don't you button that coat. How much do you weigh? A lot. Stop. How tall are you? 5'10". 5'10". <laughs> We'd make beautiful love together. I swear to God, you wouldn't know what hit you. Uh-oh. He come in <laughs> Has Crispin done you yet? No. I just met you, him today. You interested in Crispin at all? Did I what? Are you interested in Crispin? <laughs>
Seems like a very nice guy. Yeah? <laughs> Chris will make you move on her. <laughs> what, are you, uh, what are you, a homosexual? <laughs> no. Kiss her. What's the matter with you? Go over and kiss her. Why don't you kiss her? <laughs> oh, You're a movie like star. A <laughs> laughing like a mental patient. <laughs> Picking up a woman like Fred Norris. <laughs> kiss her. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Take her in your arms and kiss her like well, Gary Cooper. I work for him. What? I'm representing him as a publicist. I, I know. I'm just saying. There's nothing wrong with you two. Uh, would you sit on his lap or something? <laughs> Crispin, you want her to sit on your lap? <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, uptight? You a real man? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at what you're doing to him. <laughs> Did you want to end up on his gynecological table? <laughs> you got a boyfriend, huh? You. When you wear an outfit like that, you can't be wearing underpants. <laughs> oh. Yes. Really, you can? Yes. Thong? Yes. I'm going to break my hand. You're going to break what your are, hand? What kind of are you wearing? Just, just like Frank Stallone. <laughs> oh, you're too cute. Please, you have to leave. I'm, I'm dying. Okay. <laughs> We've got to get him out of here in like oh. another... Why? What's he doing? He's flying to L.A. Yeah, okay. Hey, listen, like, no, no, give him a few more minutes. Probably. I don't have I mean, a few minutes anyway. I got news and Bob Denver is going to be on Gilligan of all people. Oh, my calling goodness. We're nice hair. Up. I love your hair. It's that Not you, Crispin. Method. I like Crispin's hair. Oh. No, no, I do. I love your hair. Look at that. What is that? It's that what is the brand called? The special method? Men's hair. Oh, men's hair men's now? Hair Your now. men's hair now? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, if you don't put the moves on her, you're a jackass. <laughs> There's something really wrong with you if you don't put the moves on her. You're single. What's your problem? Well, <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? No, I, I wish I did. But yeah. Well, there's, Imagine you, there's one. This is how weird Crispin Glover is. He's a movie star and he doesn't have a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> a girl. That's great, man. Keep being in films like Ruben and Ed. <laughs> All right, listen, I uh, you wish you luck. You never got to tell me about his books. His books? Oh, yeah. By the way, there's a big book signing. Right. And uh, Crispin Glover will be Saturday. Let me see one of your books. Okay. Saturday at 7.30 p.m., Big and Tall Books in Los Angeles. Go see this, man. And ladies, he ain't a bad-looking guy if you He's can change him around a little. He's single and unattached. Let me see. This is one of the books you made? Yeah. Look at this. Look at these, Robin. Yeah, let me see. Now, these are beautifully bound yeah. books. You do the binding. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. And there is actual uh, stories and very strange... Now, what's the name of the well, book? One of them is called Rat Catching. Another one's called Concrete Inspection. Another one's called Oak Mott. And, uh, and you make these yourself? Uh, yeah. You don't write them? Well, yeah, I take old books from the 1800s and rework them into d different books. And some of them, yeah, I do, I, I do write them. Some, some of them I'll, I'll find the images first, like Concrete Inspection. Listen I to me, listen to me, listen to me. These are very nice, but you, you concentrate on your movie. <laughs> I'm going to read one of these books. No, you're not. You, wait, you can't even figure out which way to open this book. <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange. I mean, you've got to see these books. <laughs> it's worth going to see these books. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'll be at yeah, big and tall books on Beverly Boulevard. Uh, You're a very creative Saturday. guy, and uh, people should go see your girls go over there. Maybe you get laid. <laughs> uh, Saturday at seven thirty p.m. Big, big and tall books in Los Angeles, June thirteenth, right here in New York. Crispin Glover will be signing his book. Oh yeah, and people can look up my number too. That's a good thing to say if they go want ahead. to get a hold of the books. They can l look me up in the telephone book uh, in Los Angeles. Look under Crispin Glover, and there's a, a number where people can call and find out about the books and, and uh, uh, you the will, record and all that. And don't forget, you'll be at Tower Books in New York on June 13th. That's right. And uh, it's Crispin Glover. What can yeah. I say? And uh, listen, I try. I, I hope you're not offended I gave you some movie advice. Oh, no, I, I appreciate it. You know, I agree with you. Mellow out with some of this weird uh, behavior, <laughs> I, I all right? I agree with you. <laughs> these are very sturdy books. These are good for leveling tables, too. Oh, dear. Aren't they? Look at it. Look how thick and oh, yeah, they're hard, hard bound. Wow. So very beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to take these. You, you can have them if Yeah, you but want. I feel like you made them yourself and no, no, probably no, cost no, you a lot no, of money. No, no, I, I, I'd like you to have them. Well, Please. thank you. I, sure. I appreciate it. Robin, no, we'll share them. Yeah, I want to read one of these. Well, thank you, Crispin Glover. Well, thank you. I and, appreciate uh, it. And it's really good having you on the show. I, and and yeah. come again, okay? Oh, definitely. And try yes. to get into more mainstream movies, okay? okay? All right, real good. Crispin Glover, everybody. Robin, Thanks. we'll take a break. We'll come back to the news. <laughs> and we will be talking with Bob Denver at 9.15. Uh, and say hello to him for me. I certainly will. You know okay. everyone, don't you? <laughs> I guess. Everyone who's not important. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Crispin Glover, everybody. Thank you. All right.